Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 9th of December. Security forces gunned down three terrorists in India's Jammu and Kashmir. PDM Chief Fazlur Rahman asked Pakistan opposition lawmakers to resign by December 31. And 225 children killed in first half of 2020, says Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission. And now for all the details. Three terrorists were neutralized by security forces in an encounter that broke out in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. Meanwhile, in an another incident, terrorists hurled a grenade at security forces in Baramulla district, which missed the target and exploded on the road, injuring at least three civilians. Security forces on Wednesday neutralized three terrorists in an encounter in Pulwama district of India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The encounter broke out after a surge operation was launched in Tikkan area of Pulwama, during which the terrorists fired on the security forces, who retaliated and gunned down the three terrorists. A senior police official informed a civilian was also injured in the exchange of fire. The slain terrorists were identified as members of Islamist terror group Al Badr. Meanwhile, in another incident on Wednesday, suspected terrorists hurled a grenade at security forces in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramula district, but it missed the target and exploded on the road, injuring at least three civilians. India accuses neighboring Pakistan of aiding terrorists to mount attacks to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. Over 60 foreign envoys on Wednesday visited India's Hyderabad-based leading biotech companies Bharat Biotech and Biological E, where they were apprised of India's vaccine development programs in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. The Bharat Biotech is developing Covaxin, India's first indigenous COVID-19 vaccine and has recently requested for government approval. 64 foreign envoys, including ambassadors and high commissioners of various countries on Wednesday, visited two key biotech companies in India's southern Hyderabad city that are developing vaccines against coronavirus. The envoys visited Hyderabad-based Bharat Biotech and the Biological E for the vaccine tour, the first such initiative where they were apprised on various aspects of the vaccine production in India. Bharat Biotech, developing India's first indigenous vaccine candidate, Covaxin, is among the three drug makers which have recently requested for government approval of its COVID vaccine. While the Biological E Limited had said in November that it expects results by February. It's not just about the manufacturing process but also about logistics and it's good to know and good to hear that the centre is talking to the states and working hard on getting those logistics right for India but also for the rest of the world. Late last month, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also visited the Bharat Biotech Vaccine Centre to review progress. India has already announced that its vaccine production and delivery capacity will be used to help all humanity. In the last few months, New Delhi has provided medical supplies to nearly 150 countries, more than half on a non-commercial basis. Authorities in India are investigating if organochlorine used as pesticides or in mosquito control caused the death of one person and hospitalization of more than 400 in southern Andhra Pradesh state in the past few days. 
The unknown illness infected more than 300 children, with most of them suffering from dizziness, fainting spells, headache and vomiting. Indian authorities said on Thursday they found traces of lead and nickel particles in blood samples after hundreds of people were hospitalized due to an unknown illness in the southern state of Andhra Pradesh. Teams of doctors are investigating the death of one person and hospitalization of more than 400 in the past few days. The unknown illness infected more than 300 children with most of them suffering from dizziness, fainting spells, headache and vomiting. They were tested negative for COVID-19. Several Andhra Pradesh officials said on Tuesday that a possible cause of the illness could be poisonous organochlorin substances which are commonly used in pesticides or mosquito control. Lead yeah, alone or it is complementing uh, some pesticide poison like organochlorin. So it is under investigation. Uh, now uh, Ames New Delhi has started uh, doing tests for water and milk. And also Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, they, have, they also found lead in the blood samples of the patient, but they are analyzing water again. Organochlorins are banned or restricted in many countries after research linked them to cancer and other potential health risks. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan Democratic Movement announced that all the national and provincial lawmakers belonging to its constituent parties will hand over their resignations individually to the heads of their parties by December 31. This followed hours after Prime Minister Imran Khan declared that he would go for by-elections in the country if the opposition members resigned from the assemblies. As the opposition alliance gears up to hold its upcoming rally in Lahore, Chief of Jamaat Ulema Islam Fazl and Pakistan Democratic Movement Maulana Fazlur Rahman on Tuesday asked all opposition lawmakers to send their resignations to their party heads by December 31. Rahman made the announcement at a press conference in Islamabad on Tuesday, hours after Prime Minister Imran Khan said, if the opposition resigns from parliament, the government will go ahead with by-elections on the vacant seats. He was flanked by Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari and Pakistani Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz at the conference after the PDM leadership held a meeting to decide its future strategy. December, the اپنے استیفے پارٹی قائدین کے پاس جمع کرا دیں گے قومی اور صوبائی اسمبلی دونوں تمام ملک کے The Pakistan Democratic Movement, which is an alliance of 11 opposition parties, has been contemplating mass exit which might trigger a constitutional crisis in the middle of a pandemic. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. The Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission has said that at least 225 children were killed and over 400 injured due to war and violence in Afghanistan in the first six months of 2020. The rights body expressed concern over an escalation in violence in residential areas in the country. Over 630 children were among the casualties due to war and violence in Afghanistan in the first six months of 2020, the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission or AIHRC said on Tuesday. AIHRC spokesperson Zabiullah Farang informed among the 630 casualties, 225 children were killed and 405 were wounded. The rights body said that the main cause of the deaths and injuries was an escalation of violence in the residential areas. Last month, the International Committee of the Red Cross had said that Afghanistan remains the deadliest country for civilians, with Afghan women and children making up half of the fatalities. This comes as the United States has announced to reduce troop levels in the country. Meanwhile, top Afghan peace official Abdullah Abdullah said on Tuesday that Afghan government's talks with the Taliban in Doha are expected to enter serious discussions on Wednesday with reaching a ceasefire a top priority. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. 
The number of COVID-19 cases in Bangladesh jumped to 481,945 on Wednesday, with 2,202 people testing positive and 32 fatalities reported in the last 24 hours until Tuesday morning. According to the official data, the COVID-19 fatality rate in Bangladesh is now 1.43% and the current recovery rate is 83.24%. Earlier this week, Bangladeshi Education Minister Deepu Moni also tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Reports suggest that days before a scheduled summit between Prime Ministers of India and Bangladesh, coronavirus infection among the top members of the foreign policy team in Dhaka, including Foreign Minister Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, led to the cancellation of foreign secretary-level talks that were to be held on Tuesday in New Delhi. Meanwhile, the garment industry has been ravaged by the pandemic and workers have lost billions in wages as retailers shut shops and cancelled orders. With an aim of bolstering diminishing forests in Pakistan, authorities in capital Islamabad have started a new tree planting campaign called Throw and Grow. A variety of different seeds rolled within a ball of clay are thrown into the wooden areas where they can germinate within a few weeks. Pakistanis are sowing the seeds of a fight against deforestation, one seed ball at a time, as millions were scattered in the hills and wooded areas around Pakistan's capital Islamabad with an aim of bolstering diminishing forest. Under Project Throw and Grow, workers from the Capital Development Authority and Islamabad Wildlife Management Board picked out healthy seeds and placed them in the middle of a mixture of clay and organic compost and rolled into a ball. The seed balls are then tossed by volunteers in the wooden areas where they can germinate within few weeks. It's a very simple project. Basically, uh, we've taken uh, 1.5 million uh, seed balls and every seed ball has four seeds. And because this area is more conducive for uh, pine trees, so we have included four pine uh, seed, uh, 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 seeds in this uh, one ball. And these balls are then uh, uh, given away to all the hikers who are coming here. They are given away to all the people who are coming there for picnic. Project Throw and Grow has been in full swing for the past two weeks, and officials say they have so far scattered around 1.5 million seed balls. Hundreds of hikers and picnickers have joined in the effort. تقریباً کچھ پندرہ سے بیس دن کے بعد یہ پودا جب اس کو نمی وغیرہ بارش کا یہ سلسلہ ہوتا ہے تو نمی وغیرہ ملتی ہے تو پندرہ سے بیس دنوں کے بعد یہ اگنا شروع ہو جاتا ہے اور اس میں تقریباً تقریباً آپ یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ستر سے ساٹھ ستر فیصد اس میں کامیابی ہے اکارڈنگ ٹو ریسنٹ اسٹڈیز پاکستان ہیڈ دا ہائیسٹ ریٹ آف ڈیفارسٹیشن ان ایشیا وتھ ڈیفارسٹیشن آلموسٹ ڈبلنگ ان دا لاسٹ ٹو ڈیکیڈس Experts warned that the country could risk losing all its forests within the next 50 years if concrete steps are not taken to revive them. A four-day martial arts competition held in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir with this participation of scores of enthusiasts. It was the first martial arts event held post the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions in the city and aimed to encourage youngsters towards sports. A four-day-long Khelo Kashmir martial arts sports competition in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir concluded earlier this week. Due to government protocols for sports activities amid the coronavirus pandemic, only three martial arts sports, Taekwondo, Karate and Kickboxing, were played during the event held at the indoor sports hall at the Polo Ground in the city. Scores of players participated in the event which aimed to revive sports activities among youngsters amid the pandemic and give them a platform to further represent Kashmir in future tournaments. लॉकडाउन के बाद सभी घर पे ही थे बच्चे ना कोई भी नहीं प्रैक्टिस कर पा सका वो प्रोफेशनल हो या ऐसे ही कोई शौक के लिए खेलता हो सभी घर पे ही बैठे थे जिनकी वजह से उनकी फिटनेस भी मेंटली भी और फिजिकली भी उनकी बहुत ज़्यादा खराब हो गई थी अब जब ये जब से लॉकडाउन हुआ तो बच्चे धीरे धीरे वैसे नहीं तो धीरे धीरे आ रहे स्पोर्ट्स की ओर अभी जब हमने ये खेलो कश्मीर का इवेंट यहाँ पर किया तो हमने देखा कि सभी बच्चे जो हैं उनमें एक फिर से एक वो मोटिवेशन हुआ कि नहीं हमें फिर से करनी चाहिए प्रैक्टिस 
The players hailed the efforts by the sports authorities as this was the first sports event in which they took part after almost one year and it helped them overcome the losses they suffered in sports activities. The organizers said they were planning to hold similar events in other parts of the Kashmir Valley in the coming days. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.